Chapter 1 of Annex 6 contains a glossary with many useful definitions. However, for examination purposes, only the following definitions are required. The first few definitions deal with the alternate aerodrome, that is, an aerodrome to which the commander may elect to fly rather than continue to the destination. There are several different types of alternate that cater for different circumstances. For example, you may take off in weather minima that are too low for you to return should you have a problem immediately after takeoff, in which case you would require a takeoff alternate. Similarly, you may need to identify aerodromes en route at which you can land if you have a problem en route. It is an en route alternate. Owing to aircraft and particularly engine reliability, long range operations over remote areas can be conducted in aeroplanes with only two jet engines. This is called extended range operations by turbine engined aeroplanes or ETOPS. An ETOPS en route alternate is a suitable and appropriate alternate aerodrome at which an aeroplane would be able to land after experiencing an engine shutdown or other abnormal or emergency condition while en route in an ETOPS operation. The weather at your destination aerodrome may deteriorate such that you can no longer land there, in which case you will need somewhere else to go. You will need a destination alternate. The point is, of course, you should identify these aerodromes before flight so you know automatically what to do and where to go should a problem occur. Our last definition, flight time, is known colloquially as block to block or chock to chock time. In other words, it is not only the time actually in the air, but also includes time on the runway, as well as the time spent taxiing to and from the runway. Now let's deal with some of the details of Annex 6, starting with compliance, then control, safety, maintenance release, and finally, light displays. Firstly, compliance. The operator has several responsibilities here. He must ensure that all employees, crew, operations, maintenance personnel, etc., know that they must comply with the requirements of the state in which they are operating and also any other state that affects the operation. Compliance with the requirements is especially true for the pilots particularly in terms of the route, airports and navigation aids, but also true for any other member of the flight crew. In terms of operational control, the operator is ultimately responsible. However, in a large operation like an airline, the operator may not have the required technical knowledge and skills. Therefore, an operations department will be created. Under the direction of an individual, the so-called designated representative. This department will usually consist of the crew and operations personnel, including operations officers and flight dispatchers. In many airlines, particularly those that use the USA's Federal Aviation Authority, FAA method, operational control of the flight is then divided equally between the commander and the flight dispatcher, who are jointly responsible, must both agree that the plan for the flight is safe and sensible. The JAA method rests total responsibility for the safety of the flight with the pilot in command. The flight dispatcher will continue to monitor the progress of the flight and should he learn first about a situation which threatens the flight, he has an additional responsibility to notify the authorities and request assistance if appropriate. Let's examine 
some of the responsibilities of the pilot in command and the operator in an emergency situation. If, during an emergency, the commander has to break the flight rules, he must inform the local authorities straight away. This will normally be a verbal report to the air traffic services. Additionally, some states may require this report to be followed up by a written account, and this is usually within 10 days. If such is the case, the commander must also submit a copy of the written account to his own authority. In order to help the commander in his decision making, he must have information on all the search and rescue services for the areas over which the flight will operate. It is the operator's responsibility to ensure this requirement is met. Additionally, the operator must ensure the flight crew members speak and understand English to the required extent, which is described in Annex 1 as the operational level, level 4. Finally, whenever an aeroplane used for commercial air transportation undergoes maintenance, that fact is recorded and a certificate is raised to release the aircraft back to service. The contents of the certificate are self-explanatory and shown here.